Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. There are 100 trillion cells within your body. A red blood cell can actually be around about 10 micrometers in diameter, not very big, one of the smallest cells. You can have a sperm cell, which is around about 50 micrometers in diameter, still not very big, but you can have a nerve cell that can be around about one meter long. So cells can vary quite significantly. When you have a group of cells working together towards a primary function, these cells combined form a tissue and we know that various tissues, such as connective tissue, muscle tissue, nerve tissue, epithelial tissue, when they come together, they form an organ or organ system, and we are an accumulation of organs and organ systems. So the cell is the basic unit of life. Now, what is similar from one cell to another? Well, what I've drawn up behind me are some of the similarities between the cells of our body. First thing you can probably identify are two major subcellular structures, one of which is the nucleus itself. The nucleus houses our genetic material. This is our DNA and our RNA. Then you can see the rest of it is what we call the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm is all the fluid within the cell and also all the subcellular structures that we call organelles. Okay, if we start again with that nucleus, you can see that we've got a nucleolus. A nucleolus is a, an accumulation of RNA and some proteins and the nucleus which houses our DNA in the form of chromosomes. This is a condensed form of our DNA. As we move outside of the nucleus, you can see that there is this structure here which looks like it's continuous with the membrane of the nucleus, which we call the rough endoplasmic reticulum. There's actually two endoplasmic reticulums, a rough and a smooth. Now the rough is called rough because you can see it's studded by all these red dots which we call ribosomes. Now the function of a ribosome is to take RNA that has just come out of the nucleus and read it and turn it into amino acids. These amino acids fold into proteins. So ribosomes effectively turn DNA and RNA into functional proteins. And you can see those attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum mean that the proteins they make are embedded in the rough endoplasmic reticulum. They are played around with a little bit, they're altered, their structure is altered a little bit, and then what they do is they're passed on to something called the Golgi apparatus. You can see that this green structure here is the Golgi apparatus, again, a membrane-bound intracellular organelle. What the Golgi apparatus does is it slightly alters the packaged material that was given to it from the rough endoplasmic reticulum. For example, some of the changes it can make is it can add some things to the ends of it, like little flags that tell this protein where to go and what to do once it gets pushed out of the cell. So that means the Golgi apparatus creates little vesicles, these little bubbles here, that fuse with the wall of the cell and it releases its components, and these components are predominantly proteins that are made by the rough endoplasmic reticulum. They're slightly altered and they can travel elsewhere throughout the body. So that means the proteins made by the rough endoplasmic reticulum are destined to be exported out of the cell. You can think of it as though this is the factory, the rough endoplasmic reticulum, making the product. The Golgi apparatus is like the post office, putting the stamps on it, determining where it goes. Now the smooth endoplasmic reticulum doesn't have ribosomes on it, which means it doesn't make proteins, but what it does make are lipids. These are fats. It also plays a really important role in detoxification. That means it can take drugs and other certain compounds and detoxify them, break them down. So one of the organs of our body that does this as its primary role is the liver, which means therefore the liver has huge amounts of smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Now some other important structures include the mitochondria. The mitochondria create energy in the form of ATP. It can actually take glucose, which is the basic uh, monomer, of sugar and oxygen, and together it can create ATP. One glucose molecule can create between 32 and 36 ATP molecules. So mitochondria create energy. It also has its own DNA, and that means it can, make, through binary fission, split itself apart and make its own copies. Now, inside the cell, around about 75 to 80% of it is water but the second most abundant substance are proteins. And you can see you can have structural or functional. Structural proteins, such as these microtubules, are basically like the scaffolding of the cell that holds it together, but it can also play an important role. When this cell wants to make a daughter or another copy of itself, these microtubules are used to help split it apart. All right, we've also got 
these two important substances here. This is a lysosome and a peroxisome. Now a lysosome is actually a little vesicle that's budded off from the Golgi apparatus and the lysosome plays a really important role in breaking substances down. It degrades things. It contains enzymes called hydrolases. Hydrolases means it uses water to split things apart. So it can take proteins and split them apart into amino acids. It can take glycogen, which is complex sugars, and split it apart into glucose. It can also take fats and split it apart as well. Another subcellular structure here is a peroxisome. Now a peroxisome is very similar to a lysosome. It breaks things apart, but it didn't come from the Golgi apparatus, okay? And what the peroxisome does is it actually breaks things apart using oxygen. So it, what it does is it oxidizes substances. So it can actually take oxygen and hydrogen and create something called hydrogen peroxide and use that to split things apart. Specifically, it splits apart fats, long chain fatty acids. It can break apart using hydrogen peroxide. Now, some other important things that you should note is that when we look at the cell, it's surrounded by a phospholipid bilayer. That means there's a lot of fats embedded in there and we know that fats only let fatty things in and out or at least things that can dissolve in fats. That allows for us to separate out what's happening inside the cell to what's happening outside the cell. So this is a very quick work through with the cell and some of the subcellular structures that we call organelles.